Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather, the weekly review of hemispheric weather patterns across uh, the globe, and if mainly centered on the U.S., but sometimes we'll talk about some other stuff. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe from weatherrisk.com. It's Monday afternoon at 12 noon. Of course, we couldn't get this done on Sunday for other reasons. But we're back up and running now and lots to talk about. So let's talk about this week in weather and next week in weather. We'll start out by taking a look at uh, some important issues here. First, we'll talk about the huge snowstorm, late season April snowstorm over the northern Rockies and the upper plains, the severe weather threat over the Delta and the Midwest, the East Coast and Mid-Atlantic severe weather threat at the end of the week, and then the super wet pattern for the Midwest to the end of April. And it looks like it'll continue that way for, uh, right through into early May, in fact. So first, let's talk about the huge snowstorm over the northern Rockies and the upper plains. Now, uh, we'll start up by taking a look at the overall pattern. This is the actual uh, hemispheric pattern from the European mod from last night. And we can see a number of important features in here, which I will uh, highlight uh, thusly, uh, make sure. And uh, first, of course, we can see the um, several different features. One vortex is located right here. Another one is over here. And then, of course, we have the uh, one in North America. So we have one two, three vortexes. Notice we have a lot of blocking up of the northern latitudes here and over Greenland still. And then also a big ridge out here in the central, uh, in the Bering Sea in the central North Atlantic. So uh, a very stable pattern here. And what's happening is that we're getting a very active Pacific jet here. You see how all the lines are bunched together? And with the a block sitting up in here, this block up in here, the jet is being forced to come into Southern California, and these systems are racing across the plains in the Midwest, and it sets up a rather wet-looking pattern. And we'll see how that looks. Now, this is the uh, European model here for 72 hours, which will take us into, I guess, would be a Wednesday, uh, Thursday evening. And uh, we can see uh, the big storm over the plain states uh, right here. Let me uh, highlight it so we can see it. Uh, there's the feature right here. And, of course, here's our big vortex light just in here and another one over southeastern Canada. But, again, we can see that nice ridge looping up this way. So the energy keeps coming in on the Pacific Ocean here, and then we have a big storm. Now this is going to move up, but it's going to be replaced by another one. And all the energy in the west of the United States means a ridge here in the southeast. Well, the problem is, is that, if I can clear the screen one second here, the problem is that um, when you have all the energy in the western United States and a ridge in the southeast, that sets up a storm track through the plains of the Midwest and makes the pattern pretty wet. So that's kind of what I'm worried about here as we go through the rest of April. And a very, very cold in Alaska once again. And again, look at all the height lines crashing in from the Pacific. A lot of Pacific energy coming this way here over the next two weeks. All right, let's go to our next slide. Now, this is the European model here for uh, a Tuesday evening. And we can see the blizzard. I think this will be declared a blizzard later on. It has not, they do not yet have blizzard watches or warnings out yet the national weather service doesn't but i would not be surprised if that is the case look at these winds are you kidding me are you kidding me for april good googly moogly i mean these have to be they're going to be hurricane force in the mountains and the passes of wyoming and colorado now we have another low here implied there's our front like this and you can see it very clearly and uh, oh, this is extremely warm in here, 80s across the entire deep south, 90s in Texas, uh, 80s up into Virginia and Kentucky, southern Indiana, Illinois. And look at the cold there. Here's our gig gigantic Arctic high, and we can see the cold air coming southward. This is an impressive storm. A lot of really heavy snow coming here for these areas. This is the GFS, the 6Z GFS. Notice what it's showing here. I'm not making this up. This is an impressive system. Uh, see this area here? See the dark blue, dark brown here? That's uh, 20 to 25 inches. See the, the uh, light blue there? That's 19 to 20 inches. Now, that's a lot of snow for this late in the season. That's really going to pile on the snowpack there. All right, next slide. This is the European model. Almost the same thing, a little more to more into the Great Lakes, but almost the same thing. And again, you can see, look at that huge 12 to 18, eight, uh, yeah, 12 to 18 inches of snow over all of South Dakota, southern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and huge areas of 4 to 8 inches of snow, even up into northern New England. The European model has it uh, 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 April 12th and 11th, 11th and 12th in northern New England. Now, I happen to think this is probably right in here. This, uh, I think this is probably overdone. So I, uh, not very comfortable with that right now i think that's overdone but definitely the great lakes all the way back in here this is a big snowstorm in here this is very impressive okay 
Let's take a look at it and see it in more detail. Now, let's talk about the severe weather threat. What's going to happen is, of course, this is the a big storm coming out of the Plain States. The heavy snow is winding down now over Minnesota and northern Iowa, but still continuing in Wisconsin. Now, this is the uh, operational European here, as you can see. This is the operational European right in here. And this here is the ensemble, right? And this is both for valid for uh, Thursday. A Thursday evening, 96 hours out. There's our low. You can see it very closely. Very good agreement here. Warm front, cold front, warm front. Look how warm it is in Virginia. Good googly moogly in western Virginia. And cold front down this way. And a secondary cold front here with the Arctic air coming back into the country. So a uh, very impressive snowstorm going on in Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Michigan. Um, and again, you can see the cold boundary is by Albany uh, north, and I think that's correct. I don't think it's going to get any further south. This is too big a low pressure area to allow the snow to come any further south than that. And we'll see that in the next slide because now we can talk about the East Coast and severe weather. Now, this is the 6Z GFS, and this is showing the lifted indexes. As you can see right in here, lift index, see that? A lifted index. And this is on here, this is um, minus 2 to minus 4. And this is for uh, Thursday evening, 7 p.m. Now, the GFS is faster with the system on the front than the European is. But I believe it, whether the GFS solution is correct or the European, I think it will come through later on Friday, not on Thursday evening. I think the GFS is too fast here. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, I think the European, either one's correct. And there's going to be a decent lift with this. A lot of warm air temperatures in the 80s, a pretty strong cold front. So this looks like it's going to be a decent severe weather event. Not a massive one, but definitely looks decent on the East Coast. First one of the season. Okay, next slide. Now, this is the European Ensemble for 120 years hour Friday evening. As you can see, the GFS is much slower with the cold front. Let's, let's draw where the front is, and we can see. There, of course, here's the low. You see it there? Now, the GFS, this low is already out here. So there's a big difference there. Then we draw the front down through here, secondary cold front up through here, and there's the warm front. So this is all warm sector intensity in here, all storms, southwest winds, very strong surface winds, a lot of shear here, uh, good lifted indexes. And again, look at these 850 temperatures of minus 12, uh, excuse me, plus 12 over, as far, you can see, as far north up into here. So this one applied during the day on Friday. A lot of central and eastern Virginia, Maryland, southern New Jersey would see 850 temperatures of plus 12 or so, plus 14. And this time of year, that's temperatures into the middle, low to mid 80s, assuming, of course, you don't have a lot of clouds. But a lot of energy atmosphere, and the potential is definitely there for a decent severe weather event on Friday. It might be Thursday like GFS, but I think all the data is clearly pointing. I think the European solution is correct. This is a very strong southeast ridge, and I, I don't like a faster solution here. I like the front coming through Friday afternoon, not Thursday. We'll see. All right, next slide. Now let's take a look at our teleconnections. Here's the NAO. As we can see, it's... Uh, uh, this is the NAO right in here, all the different models, all of them keep it flat right through the period, no significant changes there. This here is the eastern-based NAO. If anything, it shows a little bit of a positive rise here, but other than that, not significant changes. This is the western-based NAO, and uh, again, look, it's pretty flat all the way through the period. Drops off a little bit here towards the end, but right through, no, no significant strong blocking over Greenland here at all. Next slide, this is the EPO, Eastern Pacific Oscillation, which represents you know, the potential of a ridge extending up into Alaska. And of course, when the EPO is positive here, as you can see that, there is, uh, this is, of course, it's, uh, there's no, it means a negative P&A. So and when it goes down to here, it gets a positive, but it doesn't look like it stays neutral. And if we look at the actual P&A forecast, sure enough, that's what happens. The P&A drops way down here. See this? Look at this. Way in here. Very impressive. So the uh, P&A is definitely going strongly negative with a lot of energy coming into the West Coast on April 15th and stays that way for a good portion of the month. And that's one of the reasons why the pattern stays it is going to stay so stormy because of all that energy coming. The Arctic Oscillation... It uh, doesn't do much. It got, rises to the positive and drops back down towards neutral. So now this here is the uh, GFS. This is the European, and we I've combined them. Uh, this is the operational run here again on the uh, left hand side. You can see it. So this is the operational run here, the OP, and this is the ensemble. And they both look how similar they are here. I mean that's a really amazing agreement. So this is uh, like I said. I think this is going to come in Friday night, not Saturday. Okay, next slide. Now, we go further out in time here, we can look at some of the big maps here. Uh, this is the, uh, the actual jet stream map at 100 and uh, 
44 hours out this would be a Saturday and we can see uh, a lot of blocking still up in here kind of, you can see it right there but the pattern is clearly changing we look all the energy coming into the west coast now we're getting a really deep trough here big up below over the uh, southwest Canada and all the energy is going to be sweeping this way through and that's a pretty wet pattern this time of year for the United States nice ridge here over uh, the north central Pacific as well and then uh, finally this is uh, a day eight and look at the trough wow Pretty impressive. I told you this was coming. Look at this stuff in here. And uh, it's a big trough like this. And the, here's a big ridge over the southeast. So there's the storm track right through the Midwest. And that's a really wet pattern. Look at the ridge here on the Bering Sea. This teleconnects to this. And this teleconnects to the ridge. Bada boom, bada bing. Now, this is the uh, European at day eight. And we can see our next storm developing very nicely right in through here. I'll call it my marker. And you can see it developing right in here. Lots of warm into here. There's the high moving off the coast. So this warm air is coming up. More cold air coming south. More active storm. A lot of rain in this whole area. Pretty active looking pattern. If we look at the MJO, the MJO is now in phase. You can see clearly very nicely here in uh, phase four. But all the models over the next uh, two weeks, this is the year Canadian through April 20th. They collapse it back into the circle of death. You see what they're doing here? They're bringing it back into here. See that circle of death. This is the neutral zone in here. So all the Canadian does that. Uh, the next one is the European also does it. Uh, the UCMET takes it again, look, from here, four, right back into the circle of death. And, uh, you know, that means that it's not going to hold. So the phase three, which is where we were at, is a pretty cold pattern for the Midwest and pretty wet. And phase four, if we were to hold it, stays cold over the Midwest, warm over the Plain States, but everybody turns dry, as you can see clearly right here. Everybody's dry. The problem is that we don't hold it. The MGO collapses. It dies off in the circle of death, so it no longer becomes a driving factor. And if we look further downstream here, this is the uh, European for day 10. Now, the, this is the operational run again right here on the left-hand side, as you can see. Uh, this is the operational run, and this here is the ensemble right in here. And what we can see very clearly, again, is look at the uh, strong negative anomaly in southwestern Canada, the Pacific Northwest, and the strong ridge over the Bering Sea. That means a lot of energy coming in fairly far south, across the plains, and a pretty stormy pattern for the Midwest. Pretty warm in the east, don't, but for the Midwest and the plain states, this is a pretty, especially the upper plains, this is a pretty wet and stormy pattern. And we can see this at day 10. This is the uh, surface map of the European Ensemble. And... Um, Let's tell, let me call the market here. You can see it. Look at the big system in here. There's our high off the coast. So we're feeding up the warm air. There's the cold from coming southward. Here's the more energy coming in this way. That's a stormy pattern. All right. And we can see that, in fact, the super wet pattern, <coughs> excuse me, is going to continue over the Midwest right through to the end of April. And this is the CFS here. We can see that the temperature is showing a lot of cold. Now, this is not winter cold. This sort of temperature is cold pattern represents. Now, Canada, it's still winter cold. But in the United States, this is uh, cold because of overcast conditions and rain. And if we look at the next slide, we'll see that's exactly what it is. You see all the cool conditions here? This is all above normal rainfall right up in here, week three, and also somewhat into week four. And that's why it's so cold here. And here, week three and week four, because mainly because it's overcast. That's really what it is. So, and, and if we look further down the road, we can see this is the GFS ensemble, the 6Z, a lot of moisture here, the operational run. Actually, this is the operational run. Again, it's the 6Z GFS. I'm not a fan of it, but if you look at the ensemble, it's just as wet, uh, again, in 11 to 15 day. So that's the uh, presentation. Uh, we'll see how it works out or not. This is meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com. I'll talk to you soon.